Make sure you follow me on social media to get updates and ask me questions. Enjoy the video. Hello guys, uh, before I start uh, talking about this new video, let me tell you that I have actually posted a new article on Medium. From my experience, I have seen that uh, commenting your code is actually not such a good technique. So personally, I pretty much never comment my code. And you will see why I do that if you read this uh, article in the Medium website. So you can find it if you go to my Facebook account, you can find the link there. In case you have a question, don't hesitate to leave it right here on Facebook or on the Medium website. Thank you very much. When you start learning Laravel, you come across Eloquent and Query Builder. You might be thinking that they are different, but actually they pretty much do the same job and sometimes you can even use Eloquent with Query Builder. We have this index function here that we have not used yet. So let's see how you would query all the articles using Eloquent. Well, you would use the article model, so articles equals to article. Then you would call the all function, like this. So I will return this, and I will save and go back to my browser and go to slash articles. You see that this returns a JSON with all the articles. So this is how you do it with Eloquent. Now what about Query Builder? Well, first of all, let me import the DB facade, which will be used to call the table method and to do some queries. So I will comment this one. And below I will write another one using Query Builder. So articles equals to DB table. So which table do we want to access? Well, the articles table and we want to query all the articles. So if I save and I go back to this, we get the exact same result. Okay, so let's now get all of the articles that are live using Eloquent. So if you remember, we have this live field inside the table. So let's query using Eloquent the live articles. So I will comment this one and go below this. So articles equals to article, where live is one, and we want to get all of them. So this get here is used always when you want to get a collection of items. So pay attention, here we want to get an array of articles that are live. We do not want to get just one, but an array or a collection if you want. When you start learning Laravel, the difference between get and first is sometimes confusing. Now, if I go back to this, you see that we get all the articles that are live. Okay, so how would we do this with a query builder? Well, very easy. So again, articles. Again, we have to use DB table. And you just have to pretty much copy this line here and paste it. And of course, the arrow. Okay. So if I go back to this, again, the same result, the exact same result with Eloquent. So as you can see, there are many similarities between Eloquent and Query Builder, because for this case here, what we did was to just copy the, this part. So now suppose you want to retrieve the first row from the article, then you just use the first instead of get here. So I will say first. Also, you have to change return to DD. So, DD articles. Actually, this has to be article because we are just returning one article now. So, if I save this and I go back, you see that this will return one single article. If you use uh, return instead of DD, you will see that this will complain about uh, you know passing an object. Anyway, there are many ways to get around this, but the one that I prefer always is to use DD. Okay, so now with these examples, you have a basic understanding of Eloquent and Query Builder. However, let me show you another way of creating an article, right? So this is how you do this with Eloquent. So let's do the exact same thing with Query Builder. Again, I will say DB, table, articles. So you have to do this always when you work with Query Builder. So why do we do this? 
Well, for eloquent, you can just use the model, as we have done here, or here, for example. You just use the model. And we do that in order to access the articles table in the database. Now, the same has to be done for Query Builder. This is actually a very short way of accessing the table. Of course, you have to write more code in comparison with Eloquent, but it is still short. So after you declare the table that we are going to use, then you can insert a new article. So you can just say insert here. This accepts an array, but we can pass a request all instead, just to avoid a couple of lines of code. If you do not want to pass a request all, then you can also pass the array, so like we have done here. Okay, so let me save and let me create an article using Query Builder. It looks like we have a problem here, so let me go to this file. 8f3. Okay, let me find this. 8f3. Okay, so the problem is in line 14. So line 14 right here. Ah, okay, so yeah, I am not authenticated and this is why you get this error in the line 14. So if I go to the create.blade.php file, you can see that the line 14 corresponds to this line here. So let me actually log in and see if this will do the work. So log in. Okay. Okay. So back to articles create and yeah, now it works. So the content will be query builder. It will be live, some date. Okay, okay, say submit. Okay, so yeah, now you get this error here. Well, this is the token that we get from the CSRF field. So with Eloquent, we have some good techniques to avoid adding unnecessary fields. For example, we can use fillable and guarded that we saw in the previous video. Also, request all that we actually use inside right here, request all, will match the name of the HTML fields with the name of the fields in the table. So as a result, the underscore token will not be added since the underscore token, it is not part of this table here. It is not a field in this table. However, this is not the case for Query Builder. Now we can get around this by specifying, as I said, the array with the fields that we want, as we have done here or we can get everything from the request except the token. So instead of request all, we can use request accept and then we can pass the underscore token. So get everything except the token. So if I save and I give this another try, it now complains about the on. Because remember, the way we handled the on, it is by converting it to a boolean. And we did that in the article model, right here. However, we cannot do this with Query Builder. So in order to avoid this problem here, I will just uncheck the live and submit again. If you still want to get the live uh, field, then you have to specify the array as we have done here. Okay, so we get the blank page, which means that everything is fine. However, if you go to the table now, you will see that the created at and the updated at fields, the timestamps are not added. You know that Eloquent will add them for you, and you can actually see this from these entries right here. But Query Builder will not do that. As a result, when you work with Query Builder, you most probably have to use arrays, like in this case here. So the drawback is that you will have many lines of code. I am sure that you prefer this instead of this, right? And you prefer this instead of this. So in terms of readability, Eloquent is very clear. Query Builder, not so much. However, there are still people out there that will use Query Builder instead of Eloquent. So the reason is performance. Query Builder will execute queries faster than Eloquent. On the other hand, as we said, Eloquent is more readable, and the main reason you would choose to go with Eloquent is the way you can define relationships, something that we have not seen yet. So to sum up, Query Builder is faster, the code for Query Builder is not so readable, not so clear, but when you're seeking for performance, then better go with Query Builder. On the other hand, Eloquent is more readable, but slower. 
Another thing that I want to mention, and we already saw that, is that methods you have in Query Builder are available in Eloquent. For example, we used where here, but we have access to some other methods as well, such as delete or order by or this get here and some other. Now, if you're wondering which one I prefer, then I do not have a preference. I use both of them, so if a table at some point will get to 1 billion records, then of course I will go for a query builder. But if my tables will be maximum, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 10 million records, then I will use Eloquent. So it really depends on your situation and the way you want to solve the problem. Now, last but not least, which one is easier? Well, Query Builder, no question about it. Eloquent is very hard to master, so if you have never used an ORM like Eloquent, then you will need some time to master relationships that we will see later in the course.